Um, so how are you, everybody? Thank you so much for joining us today for this uh, installment of uh, the, the school project that we've been working on in the last couple of months. Uh, and so we're kind of excited to share with some of you um, some of the updates that we've been doing. Um, we know we're finalizing this, this first module that is on water. Um, and we've been able to uh, work with some other organizations to uh, kind of use this module, this curriculum, and bring it into a virtual environment so that um, you can have access to, you know, a lot of computing power and, uh, as well as the module and so that you can interact with the code and see how the well, essentially do the curriculum and go along with the curriculum, as well as go along with the code uh, in a virtual environment. Uh, it's, it's all online. So your computer, you don't necessarily need a very powerful computer. You just need access to the uh, Jupyter Hub environment, which I've given you access this morning. Um, so you should all have that email on your, in your inbox. Please let me know, just you know, unmute yourself or send a chat um, to everyone if you're unable to access it or if you have not received that email and we can figure out how to um, um, get you that access. Uh, so just in the first few minutes, uh, I just wanted to go around and hopefully you can introduce yourself uh, and let us know, you know, what, what you're interested in regarding with regards to this project uh, and a little bit about yourself. So I'll go first. Uh, my name is Juan Martinez. I'm a senior research assistant at CSEN, which is part of the Columbia Kalani School at Columbia University. Uh, and we are essentially part of this project along with another organization called iSciences and as well as Baruch College. And we've, we're kind of collaborating um, to create these learning modules. And, and the learning modules, the goal of the learning modules, if you recall, is uh, to try to uh, introduce people and teach people how open science can be uh, practiced and what that looks like within a science project and how does that look like using uh, NASA data and using all of these uh, newer technologies that will hopefully uh, make our um, science projects and our research more findable, more accessible and reproducible as well and inclusive. Um, so part of that effort from NASA is this school project and what you're seeing in the screen is our GitHub page. Um, this GitHub page is all the documents and the files that are required for to create a GitHub page. We already share them with the public here in our GitHub, uh, in this top school GitHub page. Uh, I will put that on the chat for you so you can go check it out. Um, and so this is kind of our main GitHub page for the entire project. But this, this is only the repository for the main page. The water module page has a separate repository. And I can share that with you in a little bit. Um, but essentially, this these documents here that you see, these are all Quarto Markdown documents. And what GitHub does is that GitHub accesses these documents and creates these very stylized pages. Uh, so in the GitHub repository, we provide a link that then takes you to this page. And this page is just, as I mentioned, general information on the project. Um, we have the tabs up here that will show you how you can get involved, some of the events that we've been doing. Uh, you know, we've been putting a lot of this, these kind of trainings on YouTube and posting them here as well as in Zenodo. So if Camilla can help me out with that Zenodo link. Um, in Zenodo, we're adding all the documents and all of the videos that we've been recording. 
So if you as researchers have an ORCID ID, an ORC ID, uh, we can certainly give you credit for your time and it'll be something that can go on your resume as, as you know, a project that you were part of and that you collaborated and contributed to. Um, we're also trying to, you know, include as many people into this project as possible and in any capacity that, that people are able to. Uh, and one way in which we're recognizing those efforts is that we're including them in this uh, school yearbook. And so these are some of the people that so far in the last couple of months we've interacted with or have provided some sort of feedback. Um, I see some of you are already here. Um, and as well, we've included information on the, our uh, subject matter experts, which are folks that we've kind of that are consulting with us in order to make sure that these modules are, are of high quality. And finally, this is our development team. These are the folks that are essentially putting all these pages together, bringing everybody together, such as Camilla and myself and Kit, who are, who are present in this call, uh, as well as some other folks that are also, you know, uh, providing some technical assistance. And then finally, we have the modules tab which is where we'll start adding um, all of the information for each module. So we already have uh, a link for module one here. And the way that um, this will essentially take you to a, a separate repo, which I mentioned early in the call. Um, and this is the repo for the water module. And you can see also that you know it has a link here. Um, once you open this other GitHub page, it'll give you more information on this water module. Uh, so this is kind of like the main page of the water module. Um, and within this water module, we have several lessons. Um, the first one is on water insecurity. And this one uses historical um, data to determine where the areas of drought uh, are occurring. Uh, the next one is, since the first one is more historical, the next one would be a little bit more uh, current time. So we'll use near real time flood data to make an analysis on um, crops, how which crops are affected by these, these flood areas and how many acres are considered under flood according to this data. And then the last one is about um, more localized analysis. Uh, we won't be learning a lot about uh, coding. It'll, this lesson is more about uh, exploring data and understanding more about how to um, analyze data and data tables. Um, as I mentioned, this, this is kind of a a living document, so it's always getting updated. Uh, it's always getting, uh, we're always asking for feedback. And this main, one of the main reasons why we ask you to come today is, is to provide some of the feedback. Um, so today we'll also be kind of going, diving a little deeper into these lessons that you see down here and interacting with them in, in the environment. Um, but before I go any further, I, I forgot to uh, allow other people to introduce themselves. So I'll go ahead and give some time for that. Camilla, would you mind going next? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Camilla Green. I'm a research staff assistant at Season Like Juan. Um, and I've been communicating with several of you over email. I'm really glad you all were able to join us. And um, when you introduce yourself, it'd be great if you could just let us know affirmatively that you did receive the email giving you login uh, permission, or if you did not receive that email. Kit, if you have a chance. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Juan. Uh, yeah, apologies, everyone. I'm, I'm taking this call from the road, so I, I might not have a great connection. I hope you can all hear me all right. Um, my, name, my name is Kit McManus, you know, I'm the, the PI on this project working with Camilla Wan and the rest of our team. Uh, you, you've heard from me in the past.
past, and I, you know, I thank you for your patience as we've developed these lessons. We're really excited to show them to you live and to, to hear your feedback. So thanks, thanks everyone for coming. Thank you, Kit. Um, now open up the floor for Anisi or Albert or Joanne if you want to unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Hello, Anise. my name is Anise Williams. I am an environmental um, management systems coordinator for the city of West Palm Beach and the public utilities department. So I deal with a lot of water all the time. Um, just quickly, I guess, like educational background. I have my uh, bachelor's in marine environmental science. I have my master's in marine biology as well. Um, one thing that is unique about the city of West Palm Beach is we own a preserve, and that's pretty much our first step for our drinking water. Um, and I am here to network, learn a little bit more. Another thing that I um heavily involved in in my department is a lot of environmental awareness for all of my employees and public utilities. Um, just trying to find better ways that um, everyone can learn. Everyone learns differently. So glad to be here. Glad to learn myself. And um, and yeah. And I did receive the email. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, Anise. Mm -hmm. uh, that's so exciting that you're from West Palm Beach. I'm currently right now in uh, uh, Broward. So not too far from you. Um, and yeah, this is a great uh, curriculum because a big part of what we're trying to do is trying to figure out ways in which to provide this information to people. And as you mentioned, everybody learns very differently. So we're trying to provide, you know, not only text, but also providing these recordings uh, using a lot of images and uh, using these kind of leveraging these pages that are a little bit more user friendly and dynamic so that we can provide this information. So I hope it's helpful to you and your team. Yes, it is. And I just want to say one more thing. Um, I'm actually the co-lead and co-organizer for OpenScape's Pathways to Open Science program as well. So um yeah, just trying to awesome. expand my horizons as well in open science. And I completed the module um, of the lessons. I received my badge and all of that. So still learning as well. So awesome. Congratulations. Hi, everyone. Xuan Zhou from Texas State University. Uh, I'm currently the data curation specialist and in the university libraries. Um, I'm working with research data and also currently I'm the point of, of contact for the GIS services at the university libraries. Um, yeah, we've been working a lot with open access, open scholarship, open data, open science. So um, I'm happy to join this team and learn from you. And yeah, by the way, I got the email and have access to all the documents. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Juan. Uh, hi, my name is Albert. Um, currently, I, I am a research assistant at the National Institute for Space Research in Brazil. So I arrived here because I did some work with the data carpentries. So I'm very excited to be here. I just like Anise, I just received my badge from the school tops. I'm very interested in open science and developing curriculums that could be shared along different institutions. I think we, we have a lot to, 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 uh, to learn from that experience. And I will be very happy to start using that material here at the, at the Institute. Thank you. Thank you so much, Albert. Welcome to you as well. Uh, you mentioned you're, at, you're located in Brazil? Uh, yes. Oh, okay, great. Sao Paulo State. No, the south of Brazil, yes. Awesome. My fiance just went there a few days ago for work. So she's sending me pictures and it looks amazing. <laughs> I'm so jealous of her. Right yeah, it, it's nice. But actually, I'm from Colombia. So oh, I, came I am too. From... Are you Colombian? Colombia. Yeah, yeah, I'm from Cali. You know, what... <laughs> I, I'm from, I'm from Tierra Dentro. But most ah. of the time, I live in Bogota. Nice ah, to meet okay. you. Awesome. Yeah, we've, we've actually uh, interacted with some of the students from Bogota, um, one of the universities there. 
we did a project for um, Amerigio, which is part of the Human Planet Initiative for NASA. Um, and yeah, this is a lot of similar information that we provided with them, just, you know, how to use open data and, and how to create these projects using accessible data. <clears throat> um, all right, so now to get into the water module, um, it's great that you all have, you know, a, a background and that you are very familiar with open science. So, um, you know, I, I won't get into much of the open science 101 uh, inf information, but we do provide a lot of links for open science. I know, uh, Sean, if you're not familiar with the open science curriculum, I highly recommend that, that you check it out um, and that, you know, you yourself get badged if you haven't done so yet. Um, because that has a lot to do with this project as well. This is kind of like a continuation of that or, or just an, an, a different iteration of what open science is. And so our task here is to try to show how those principles that you've learned in open science 101 curriculum, how they can be applied um, to these research projects. Uh, so as I was mentioning, Denise, one of the ways in which we provide this information is through these GitHub pages. Uh, because they are very uh, user friendly and easy to read and, and they're very uh, easy on the eyes. Uh, so this is one way in which we're providing this information for people. The only caveat with these uh, GitHub pages is that they're static, meaning that you can't really interact with them very much. They're, they're as soon as you publish them, they are, um, displayed as they are and it's it's and you can update them but for the user they don't have very much um, ability to interact with them uh, so this is our first lesson which is about acquiring and pre-processing uh, this WSIM GLDAS data set and WSIM means water and security indicator model for global land assimilation system. So it is a global coverage data set, which can be useful for, for all of you. Um, but in this particular lesson, I think we dive into Texas. So maybe Shuan, you, you may be um, interested in, in what we do here, but this can be applied to any region in the world. The only reason why we chose Texas is because based on our uh, literature review, you know, Texas has a lot of issues with, with water scarcity and, and, and uh, water floods and, and things like that. So it was, a, it was an interesting uh, case study location. Um, but as you can see, you know, we provide background information. It's, um, you know, sourced the, the citations that we use are peer reviewed or, or we try to include peer review citations, but we also use uh, newspaper articles. And along the lesson, we try to provide images, but also on the side, you see these kind of data science reviews or these call outs that give you more general information about what we're talking about. Um, you know, in these projects, there's a lot of assumed knowledge. Uh, so we try to make this assumed knowledge more explicit by creating these call outs. So if people, if someone using reading this doesn't know what a raster is, uh, they can refer to this and, and we give links that link out to other pages. So for example, this one uh, links out to this QGIS documentation and it explains what a raster is. Uh, and there's many callouts like that as well. Um, aside from these callouts, we also provide these other callouts called knowledge checks, which asks the user questions on what they were just looking at. So it's a great way for the user to kind of get a sense of how much of the information they've absorbed so far. And if there are any important information that they've missed, you know, they can go back and check um, the information and then see if they've you know uh, retained the, the information. Um, and we also provide other kind of callouts regarding 
this the, the theme that we're discussing. So in this one, you know, we talk about the data set itself, where we're downloading it from, which comes from the NASA CDAC uh, Archive Center. And, and so we try to do this with every data set and we do this in every lesson as well. Um, and then you start to see that the code is also made available. Um, as I mentioned, this, these pages are static. So uh, as much as you can do is that you can just copy this code to your clipboard and take it, use it on your own local computer. But in the environment, we'll be able to use this more in a more dynamic way. Um, and just very quickly, this is, it, it shows you essentially how to open the data, how to read the data and how to start visualizing it. So you can start seeing what the data is, how to use it, uh, what it's trying to tell us, what, what days or years it, it has available. Um, so the lesson just kind of slowly goes through uh, acquiring and previewing the data. This is here is giving you, you know, some of the variables available. Uh, and we use other data to start subsetting this data. You can see now that we're starting to kind of focus in Texas. Uh, and then the data below is the uh, water scarcity data that we were talking about. In this particular instance is we're looking at uh, deficits, water deficits. Um, and I believe there are actually a specific time, but if, oh yes, December 15th, 2014. Um, so it, it essentially guides you along and how to access the data, how to read it, and how to download it and share it as well. So you can, you know, save these images and share them online or share them with your group. Uh, so the whole idea of this um, lesson is to show you uh, the data cycle process or the life cycle of the data from acquiring it to downloading it, opening it, displaying it, and then sharing it with um, a, a wider community. And this is going to be the case for most lessons. Um, in the next lesson, for example, now we're discussing how to create, how to do more of a, a, an analysis using population data. Uh, so again, we, we give these kind of code reviews that explain to you, you know, the packages that we're using. In this instance, we're using R as a language because apparently the uh, community seems to use our language a little bit more than Python, but our next modules will likely use Python and, and as well as R. So, but this one in particular is an, is written in R. Um, so, so yeah. And then in this particular lesson, we are now starting to plot the data and visualize it with colors. Uh, so we can then use these um, displays to to make an informed decision. For example, in here you can see you know the years and and the return deficit periods. You can see you know 2011 Texas was severely uh, in the deficit had a had a, a large deficit, um, and then at the end we start bringing in more population data. I'm just gonna scroll down to the bottom, uh, so you can see that the population data is kind of combined or or analyzed against the water deficit data. And it's providing us um, a ratio of people that are within this, within these areas of extreme deficit of, of water returns. Um, you can see that, you know, January of course had a majority of people, a significant majority of people under a, an extreme deficit. Um, so hopefully when, when you have, you know, you're on your own, you can go through these more carefully or, or more slowly uh, and create and generate your own tables, as well as if you, if you want to use it for a different region, 
uh, you can change that region within the code as well and, and generate a different analysis. Um, so these are just the way that the GitHub pages are set up. This is just one way for, for people to absorb the data and interact with the data. There's, there's not a lot of uh, clicking or, or heavy lifting from the user. It's all provided for you. Uh, so this is just a very kind of simple way to, to get the data and understand the code and see it uh, rendered. But this does not allow you to interact with it. Um, <clears throat> I already spoke about the water module. And so then let's get into um, the science core environment. This is a Jupyter GitHub environment, and this will allow you to interact with the code. I'll put it in the group chat, the link. And so the first page in this Jupyter Hub will ask you to log in. Uh, and then you're gonna use your GitHub username to log in. Once you log in, you should see this page that shows you the server options, uh, you have image options and uh, research allocation options here. Uh, so once you log into this page, you'll see that uh, the image option, there's a top school project here. And this is the option that we're gonna use to access the modules. Um, under research allocation, you're gonna want to select either 14 gigs of RAM or 29 gigs of RAM because the data sets that we're going to use are quite heavy and quite large. Uh, as you saw, they, were, they have a lot of dates, a lot of region to cover. Uh, so we kind of need the RAM to be a little larger to be able to handle the, that information. Because once we start interacting with it, we'll load it up into our memory. And so this memory is the one we're gonna need. So I usually go with 14 gigs. And then once you have these two set up, you can press start. Um, the first time you log in, this may take a couple of minutes just to get your personal environment started and to get it set up. But before this call, I already logged in. So hopefully this does not take very long. Now, do we have any questions so far? Hi, Hugh, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Yeah, feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions. Hey, Juan. Yeah, just a, a, a quick a quick comment. Uh, sorry, sorry, you hear my GPS too. <laughs> no, you're uh, fine. I, I just wanted to clarify for folks that an option also is that they could clone the GitHub repo. You know, if if if, if they have uh, you know a powerful computer that they're working on that has quite quite a big amount of memory, then it, it is possible to, to to connect through through GitHub and to clone the repository and run this on their local computer. Yes, thank you, thank you, Kit. That's right. Um, so yeah, the, the pages that you were looking at are all provided in this water module uh, repository. So the two lessons that we're looking at are right here. Um, so if you want to download all of these files, uh, we don't provide the data sets because they're just way too large. So you can go to uh, the CDAC website and, and download them directly from their website for free. Uh, and you have the lessons right here. And so what we did is that we added a kind of a, a sequence number so you can know which one goes first and which one goes second. Um, right now, one of our developers is creating a Python version, but for now it's the uh, acquisition one and the visual one, which will become just a single lesson. And then you have the other uh, near real-time flood data as a separate lesson. And then the third one is the New York City LED. This is uh, what we call a Shiny app. So it's not necessarily 
a GitHub Pages document. It's it's a more of a dynamic, interactive uh, web page that we set up. So in that web page, you'll see you'll be able to interact with the data, but you won't be able to run any code. Uh, so there's there's that difference between those two lessons. Uh, but the, for the first two lessons, they are available in the uh, Jupyter Hub environment. <clears throat> so once the Jupyter Hub environment launches um, for this particular data set, it will launch an R Studio um, instance or R Studio kind of environment for you. And this is where this is kind of like an application that you can also download into your computer, but this environment provides it for us virtually online. Um, so the first page that you open, you can see that this is kind of like the index page this is the main page. And right now we're in visual mode. And as you can see, visual mode looks pretty much exactly like the pages here that you're looking at. This is exactly the same information but it's just in a virtual environment in which you can then now uh, uh, interact with. So this is a great advantage because it also provides you RAM here. Um, and so we'll, we're gonna use this RAM to interact with the data as well and run some of the code. Uh, so the first thing you want to do when once you enter here, you can see that you know this is the the main page. But what you want to do is you know in in the left side you'll have kind of the files open and will show on this top left panel. Uh, in the bottom left panel, you have your console and terminal. This is essentially where the um, code is being ran. So the way that this works is that uh, any code that you run here, it would it, what the computer is doing is essentially pasting it down here and running it. So if I do like print, hello. Oh, it's gonna be print like this, I think. See, so this is essentially how it's running. Um, and so this console will show you pretty much what the computer is doing. Um, uh, and it will then, if you want to load variables, it will then load them into your environment, which is showing you on the top right panel. And so in your environment, you can see all the variables that are, that are loaded. Uh, into your RAM. Uh, for me, just for you to start, I would recommend just cleaning it. This is where you clean your environment. And what this is going to do is that it's going to remove everything from the memory. And so now your environment is empty, it's clean, and it's ready to go. And then in the bottom right panel, you have several tabs that are very useful, but the main one is the files tab. And in this tab, you're only going to worry for now about the share file um, because you only have privileges uh, to to read. You don't. There's no writing privileges, unfortunately. So anything that you create on the on this environment will be saved into your RAM, but it won't be saved into the uh, Jupyter Hub environment. So what well, you can go into this share folder. You can now see that the modules are all here available for you. Uh, so the first one we want to try is the acquisition one, which we were just looking at. Uh, all you have to do is double or click it once, and it will open up for you. I'm going to close this index one. And you can see that we're, we're still in visual mode. So a lot of this information is displayable in this way. But if you click on source, you can then see the actual code that we used to, to create these pages. It's the same information that I just showed you. Uh, it, it's just in the source mode. 
And so the, the best way to go about using these modules is to just keep it in visual mode so that it's a little bit more easy to, to follow along because it creates these, you know, uh, titles and, and bold and it, and it creates a little bit more dynamic uh, information. Um, okay, so then uh, as you as you follow along, you can see that all the information that we saw in the Git in the GitHub pages is, is here, uh, including the knowledge check questions, um, all these call out boxes as well. But then once you start getting into the code, you can see that it creates this box. And so in the box, you can hide it. Um, but the main two buttons that you really need are these two right here. The one on the left, it is uh, to run all the code chunks above. So since there are no code chunks above, if I click this one, it probably won't do anything because there are no code chunks. But this play button will run the current chunk which means it'll run this entire chunk here. So if I press play, you'll see that the environment is already interacting and that it's already adding things to my environment. Um, so the, the first code chunk is just to install the packages and to let the computer know, let this environment know, hey, these are the R packages that we're gonna be using for this module. Once the packages are loaded, in here we are using an uh, AWS bucket to um, to access the data. And so let's see if we run it. Um, what this is doing is accessing the S3 bucket, and it's gonna print out. Um, it's gonna assign a variable to this data and it'll print out some information on the uh, data that we've loaded. I think the first step is the longest step because, or the first few steps are the longest steps because as I mentioned, these data are quite large. I'll, like, I don't know how many gigabytes, probably like four or five gigabytes of data in, in a single file. Um, so, the first time you load these files, they do take a little while just because of, of the size of them. But as we move along the data, the, the module, uh, we start subsetting the data. So it should be a little bit more easy to handle. Um, all right, so um, we see here that, you know, in this code chunk, what this is doing is still reading data, but now instead of grabbing all the data, it's subsetting the deficit variable. Um, so, and then you can see here that, let's play it. Oh, something's going on. Let's see if it's print. Yeah, it's printing. So you can see that this one has deficit dimension oh okay i guess it already oh this already subset the deficit dimension so this one would probably not work oh right 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 i understand now um this code chunk here is if in case you're using this script on your local computer so it's accessing a local file but since we don't have the file here we can just use this um AWS bucket. Um, but I think once we play this one, it should continue the lesson. So we can see that it's already subsetting some of the data, it's grabbing some of the dates, uh, and then you can begin to interact with it. So the, the good thing about this environment is that if you want to change something, if you want to look at a different variable, or if you want to change these legends, you can certainly do so just by going in here and changing any kind of 
uh, data point that you want and then just running the code chunk again and uh, it'll change dynamically. And you can see that the differences are, you know, these, these gray bars changed. Um, so yeah, as you keep going along the, the um, lesson, um, we hope that you can continue to interact with it. Uh, if there are any things that you see that, you know, are a little weird, take note of them or something that doesn't work, let us know, or if you know a better way to do it, anything like that, uh, that really helps us to um, make this these modules a little better. Yeah, and just then, to jump in, yeah. sorry, real quickly. Um, the two, two ways you can provide us feedback if you're coming across this and you do see some something that you wanna flag for us is you can always email us, but also if you're, uh, familiar with github you can always open a github issues um or even make a branch of our repo and you know start working on it yourself thank you Camilla. um and so yes so you all should have access to these documents and to this environment uh, for you to be able to um, interact with it. Uh, if you want to change, instead of choosing Texas, you want to choose Florida, or you want to use a different part of the world, you can. You're more than welcome to. Uh, the only thing about this particular lesson is that we do uh, rely on the uh, on the geo boundaries, USA admin boundaries, but I think they provide you know global data. So you can certainly try and subset the data in, in a different region as well. It doesn't have to be just Texas. Um, but, you know, as long as geo boundaries has those boundaries available, then you can use them. Um, in this instance, like I mentioned, we're using the boundaries for USA. And so the lesson as it is right now will demonstrate uh, the analysis in Texas. Um, yeah, and so once once you're done, the one way in which you can download information is that I believe you can right click it in, in this in this environment at least. You can right click and save the image as, or if there are things here that you wanna uh, download for yourself, like if you like some of the pictures that we used, you can go into these folders and and we provide. Uh, some of the data, but we also provide some of the outputs as well. So if you want to download the map plot, you can click here. And then if you um, export, you can export it here and it'll download it into your computer. Um, I think this script also has a, a part here, these grayed out parts that allow you to do this. If you download this repo and you put it on your computer, you can just do this directly on your computer. Uh, but these are grayed out here in this environment because as I mentioned, you the users don't have uh, write privileges, writing privileges. So these code chunks wouldn't work within this environment. Um, once you're done, usually we provide a link, but this link will take you to, to the GitHub page. It won't take you to the next one. So the way that you just go to the next one is just to click uh, here and then go to the next lesson. And it's the same concept, you know, reading the data, um, displaying the data, and then in this instance, it again uses geo boundaries. And then we also access some of the um, uh, population data from NASA, from CDAC. Uh, and then you can see here that now we're starting to talk about colors. So if you, know, if you wanna try a different color, you're more than welcome to, and it'll change the color for you. Um, so there, there's many things that you can do in here. To, to interact with it. And so I hope that once you enter this environment, that, that 
that you do start playing with it, start messing around with it. So in case that there's any issues or this can be done in a, in a better way, um, you know, we can then uh, absorb your feedback and apply it to these to these modules. Uh, the goal for this for this entire thing and the, what we're asking from everybody is that you know it is a collaborative project and so that's that's something that's very unique to the project that we are already starting to include people in the process um, so I don't expect this to be you know a finished product right now uh, I just hope that as time goes on that people interact with it and and that they contribute something to the project. And so that whole process within itself, we also consider you know, being part of open science. The fact that you guys are here right now uh, and that I'm showing you this unfinished pro product uh, is just another example of how open science can, can be practiced. Um, so that's kind of one unique thing that, that this project brings is that we're trying to involve the community as early as possible so that they can provide us feedback and make this product uh, as, as, as best as it can be. Uh, and then, you know, the next person after you that comes in and, and uses this product, maybe you'll have different questions or different suggestions. And through the process that Camilla said, either, you know, through the GitHub, um, branches or sending us an email, however you prefer. Uh, we hope to then include that information here. Um, just other things about the environment. Quickly, this is you know the outline of the lesson itself. So if you click on these, it'll take you to that specific spot. And one thing that I did notice about this environment is that if you click Wherever your cursor is, uh, if you run one of these code chunks after it's done, it'll it'll scroll down to where this is. So, and anytime you're using a code chunk, I recommend just clicking in on it so that then the, this Jupyter Hub doesn't like scroll back up where you're not somewhere else where your cursor is. Anytime you use this, just click click where you're at just so so that environment stays with you. Uh, other than that, if you break something, if you delete something, don't worry. Um, it's it's not gonna go anywhere. You could just restart the environment or close, the, close this and don't save and reopen it again. Um, it shouldn't, you know, the idea is that this is a sandbox for you to, to play in and to interact with this data. Um, so you have every kind of freedom to 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 use it, and then hopefully at the end of it, you know you you would have uh, contributed to the project, you would have learned something, uh, and and then if you want to borrow any of these technologies, if you want to borrow any of this information, please do so because that's the idea is that this is open source information. Um, and so it's it's open to the public for you as well. Um, and with that, I'll take any questions that you may have, or if there are any issues. Thank you, thank you, Juan. I I just wanted to to chime in. I I do have to drop the call in a couple minutes, but I wanted to mention that you know I I think it's a unique opportunity here with with you know with folks on the open science team who've been trained in OS 101 and are very familiar with these practices to, to look at these lessons with a critical eye and you know to help us to identify if, if, if we're missing anything that is an important gap uh, so you know we, we really welcome your feedback and criticism on this you know we're, we're, we're hoping to, to put this in a production environment quite soon uh, we, 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 we'll certainly be taking your feedback very seriously and it will really be, you know, it'll impact how these lessons appear when, when the public gets access to them. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. Yeah, 
just to reiterate what Kit said, uh, we've tried to include some of the open science themes and, and uh, lessons that are in the open science 101 curriculum, which some of you have already taken. Um, but we hope to include more of that information and kind of drop it in through these call outs. So if there are some, is there something that you recognize like, oh, this is similar to what I saw in Open Science 101, please let us know because that's that's very valuable and, and it will certainly help uh, to make the connection from the Open Science 101 curriculum into this curriculum. Uh, and yes, you when you use the environment, the environment essentially creates your own image or, or your own uh, environment. So it will not affect other users, uh, especially that uh, as users, we don't have writing privileges in this environment. So the lessons and the data that's in there won't change. It'll maybe change for you in your environment and it may be, um, <clears throat> It may, if you don't, if you don't close this and you leave it there and you come back, it will probably retain where, where you left off. But if you close it and don't save it and just reopen it, it, it will return to the original state that it was. So as I mentioned, this is almost like a sandbox. You can delete everything. You can mess up everything. Uh, you should be fine. Um, and so the idea is to give you this freedom to interact with data and interact with, with uh, the R language and to learn a little bit about how it works. You know, if you're not familiar with R, it's, it's, it's very similar to Python. Uh, but even if you don't know Python or R, uh, we try to explain what is happening within the text so, so that uh, people receive context. Um, so yeah, does anybody have any questions or any suggestions that they want to provide? We have three minutes left. Um, so I, I want to open up the floor for our participants. All right, well, if there are no questions, um, I know that I always have questions when everybody leaves and after <laughs> after I leave a, a meeting. So if you do have any questions later on, please do not hesitate to, to contact us. I know Camilla has been interacting with you, so please just reply to her email if you have any questions or any suggestions that you may have uh, for this project or if you have any issues accessing the data uh, please do let us know. Um, and yeah, and thank you so much for, for your time. Or we'll stay on here for a few more minutes in case anyone has any questions or feedback. Thank you.